Hello everyone. In today's video, we will compare sexual and asexual ways of reproduction. See the development of the world without mutations. Learn about genetic drift. And how the size of the population and intensity of natural selection affect the speed of the evolutionary process. All of this we will see using simple mathematical models. The rules of biology in them are simplified so that the measurements can be a bit off. But we will be able to see the most common patterns and tendencies. In the models, I will use the following terms. Sexual reproduction, reproduction with genetic recombination between two organisms. This means a new organisms receive each of its genes from one of its parents. Asexual reproduction, reproduction by copying itself. For example, cell division, gemation, cloning, etc. The first model. This is an ideal genome that ensures maximum fitness to the environment. All organisms should achieve it. In this model, a genome is a sequence of alphabet letters and space. This is the genome of 20 organisms. For now, it's filled with spaces. Green cells are where an organism's genome matches the perfect genome. Right now, each organism has 13 matches. Let's write this info here. The number of matches is the measure of fitness determining who will leave offspring. Now we need a way to select organisms that will participate in reproduction. For example, we have four organisms with different levels of fitness. We can simply exclude ones with lower fitness. But we will use a more natural way of selection. Fitness will determine the chance of an organism to leave an offspring. Let's calculate the total amount of fitness for the entire population and calculate the proportion for each organism. We get these probabilities. This way, even the weakest organism will have a chance for reproduction. But if the absolute values of fitness increase, then the probabilities will be almost equal. But you know, a rabbit doesn't have to outrun the bear, it just has to outrun another rabbit. Therefore, the probability of leaving offspring must depend not on the absolute value of fitness, but on the difference in fitness in different organisms. So before evaluating the probability of reproduction, we will reduce the fitness number so the organism with the lowest fitness will have it equal to 1. Based on these probabilities, let's select half of the population for reproduction. With asexual reproduction, each organism will create two clones. This way the population size returns to the original. Let's start the model. The probability of mutation is 0.2. That is, in each generation, one out of five organisms has a mutation, randomly changing one of the genes. At the very first step, we had a beneficial mutation and this organism will be among those who would leave offspring. The hash symbol will mark organisms selected to form the next generation. Since we are now using asexual reproduction, then in the next generation there will already be two organisms with this gene. And so on. In time, every organism in the population will have this gene. Another beneficial mutation. And another one. But the mutation only present in a small pool of organisms can always disappear due to random fluctuations. The problem is we are using a soft selection. Even organisms with high fitness have a chance to leave no offspring. Here two organisms got a match but in different parts of the genome. This shows the main problem of asexual reproduction. Population ends up filled by only one type of organism. Which is exactly what happened. Here of three beneficial mutations only one type of organism survived. This is a fatal flaw in asexual reproduction. Each successful gene must appear in clones through mutation, and cannot be introduced from the outside. After 1000 generations we got organisms whose genome have 37 matches with the perfect one. Let's repeat the experiment but with sexual reproduction this time. 
Let's select half of the population for reproduction again. Then each of the selected organisms chooses two partners and creates two offspring mixing its genome with its partners. This way each of the selected organisms will be a parent for at least two offspring and the population size will return to the original. Let's start the simulation. We quickly get the first beneficial mutation. The mutated organism is selected for reproduction. In the next step, we have four organisms with this gene. Seems like the original mutated organisms reproduce with a large number of partners. But this is not always the case, of course. Here is another beneficial mutation. The organism was selected for reproduction but failed to pass the mutation. Remember, the probability of passing a gene is 50%. Asexual reproduction has no such problem. This is one of the downsides of sexual reproduction. But of course, there are upsides. Here are two organisms with increased fitness appeared. In the model with asexual reproduction, only one of them would survive. Sexual reproduction allows both genes to survive in the next generation of organisms. This is the main upside of sexual reproduction. Each mutation can persist in a population and end up in the genome of all organisms. Here is another case of two mutations successfully becoming a part of the population's genome. Looking at the model's results shows that despite all the advantages sexual reproduction wasn't more efficient than asexual. To increase the efficiency we need a population where each generation consists of organisms with perfect matches in different parts of the genome. This way in the new generation there will be organisms that receive two beneficial genes from their parents. In the current model with a total population of 20 organisms, this happened just a few times. To enhance the probability of mixing we have either increased the size of the genome or the size of the population. Let's do the latter and set the size of the population from 20 to 1000. Now the genome of each organism is represented by a line 1 pixel thick. Let me remind you that individual organisms are shown horizontally. Beneficial genes are marked in dark color. The vertical column shows that in all organisms in the population, this gene matches the perfect genome. Let's start with asexual reproduction. You can see how groups of organisms with different genomes mutually replace each other. Inside the groups, new groups appear, and so on. Many beneficial genes are simply being pushed out of the population. Look at this line chart. With each generation, fitness increases a bit. The thousandth generation's genome is almost perfect. Now let's try with sexual reproduction. The population's genome looks different from the one in the asexual model. There are no separate groups of organisms. Each beneficial gene gradually becomes a part of each organism's genome. Let's see the line chart. In the population of 1000 specimens, the advantages of sexual reproduction are evident. The growth rate of the population's fitness to the environment has more than tripled. Now we should talk about such an important phenomenon as gene drift. Imagine that there are two variants of the same gene in the population. In biology, this is called alleles. If not one of them gives an advantage over the other, then during the transition to the next generations, the frequency of their distribution in the population will change randomly. Let's use the model and see how the frequency of two variants of the same gene will change in a population of 1000 organisms. You can see intense fluctuations in one of the genomes. Over time one of the variants can completely displace the second one from the population. Let's increase the size of the population up to 10,000. The fluctuations of the alleles become less intense. Let's increase the size of the population up to 100,000. The chart has become smoother. Thus, the smaller the population the more intense random fluctuations become. 
Now let's imagine that allele gives an evolutionary advantage of half a percent and 10% of the population have it. Now the size of the population is 1000 organisms. You can see that even though allele has an advantage it can still disappear due to random fluctuations in the population. In this simulation, it disappeared more than twice as often as it persisted. Let's increase the size of the population up to 10,000. With this size, the probability for the allele to disappear is significantly lower. Let's increase the size of the population up to 100,000. The bigger the population, the higher the probability for small but beneficial mutations to persist. The smaller the population size, the more the effect of random gene drift becomes prominent. However, due to the drift, smaller populations evolve faster. This evolution is random, but sometimes it turns out to be useful. Now you can see the histogram where columns show the prevalence of each beneficial gene in the population. With sexual reproduction, as soon as some beneficial gene has appeared in the population, its column slowly grows, twitching due to drift. With asexual reproduction, the histogram will look different. Columns with beneficial genes can achieve high rates but then quickly disappear. Like these two columns here. Let's rewind and turn on the mode to see the genome. Here you can see two variants with beneficial genes. Although they were beneficial, they were quickly replaced by other groups of organisms. Pick the wrong door, I'd say. In asexual reproduction for an allele to persist, it must be a part of the dominating group. Thus, gene drift is only relevant in sexual reproduction. Here I have turned off mutations so that it is more convenient to observe how the frequency of propagation in different groups of clones changes during asexual reproduction and how some groups disappear over time. Only two groups left. Each one of them consists of four unique successful variants. Half of them are going to disappear. To prevent this, I turn on sexual reproduction. All four variants were able to persist. And now the final model. I added a function to adjust the intensity of natural selection. In the previous models, I've used the most intense option. I call it level 3. Before selecting organisms for reproduction I adjusted their fitness so the lowest one was equal to 1. But we can increase the number to 10 or 100. In this table, you can see how the probability of leaving offspring changes at each level. I also added harmful mutations to the model these lower the fitness of the organism. The appearance rate of beneficial mutation is 1 to 150. The chance of a harmful mutation to appear is 100 times higher. There are also neutral mutations which do not affect the fitness of the organism. The harmful mutations are marked yellow. And this is the chart. Here you can see how the fitness of the best organism changed in each generation. You can also see all harmful and beneficial mutations in its genome. At this point, I have reduced the level of intensity of natural selection. Organisms begin to degrade, accumulating harmful mutations and losing beneficial ones. And this degradation will stop at a level that can be maintained by weakened selection. In this model, we will experiment with different parameters. The chart will show how the fitness of the best organism has changed over 10,000 generations. We have separate charts for sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. There are also separate charts for different population sizes. Right now I'm using the least intense level of natural selection. A big population gives advantages for sexual reproduction. For asexual reproduction, not so much. This is easy to explain. The bigger the population, the more beneficial mutations appear in generations. Sexual reproduction allows these mutations to persist. Asexual reproduction just produces clones until only one type of organism remains.
Now the population is constantly 1000 organisms. Let's see how the intensity of natural selection will affect different types of reproduction. With low intensity in asexual reproduction, organisms accumulate more harmful mutations than beneficial ones. With high intensity organisms have a minimal amount of harmful mutation regardless of the way of reproduction. Now let's experiment with the probability of mutations. The top charts represent sexual reproduction, and the bottom charts are asexual. The left chart represents the 1 to 10 mutation rate, at the right each new organism mutates. You can see that with sexual reproduction, the population easily handles a high rate of mutations. Population adapts to the environment very fast, but as a trade-off organisms accumulate more harmful mutations because natural selection can't keep up with the reproduction rate. But with asexual reproduction, everything is even worse. Let's see how the genome of a population changes with asexual reproduction. Right now the mutation rate is low and all harmful mutations are quickly eliminated. When a beneficial mutation appears, the clones of this organism slowly replace all the others. Then the process repeats with the next mutation. But what if every new organism will mutate? The simulation goes south. Groups of clones are divided into smaller subgroups each generation. You can see how groups mutually replace each other accumulating more and more harmful mutations. And what happens if we turn off mutations completely? What? Organisms no longer mutate. The top charts represent sexual reproduction, and the bottom chart, asexual. The left side has a population of 1,000 organisms, right, 10,000. The entire genome of organisms is randomly generated and we can see that there are beneficial variants for each gene in the population. Sexual reproduction allows them to persist. But on the left side, the population is small, and on the right it is large. I've already talked about gene drift, and I hope you've already figured out what will happen now. With asexual reproduction, everything is simpler. Only clones of the best original organism remained. This result does not depend on the size of the population. This is not the case for sexual reproduction. In a small population, many beneficial variants will simply disappear due to random fluctuations. But in a large population, almost all beneficial variants are preserved. Anyway, regardless of reproduction type, without mutations you will always end up with a population of clones. With sexual reproduction and a large population size, the result will be an almost perfect genome. However, it may take a long time. Maybe then it's worth getting rid of the mutations. But there is one thing. The model uses the perfect genome, completely suitable for the environment. While in reality, the environment constantly changes and the perfect genome changes with it. New niches to adapt appear. So the absence of mutation is good only in a perfect environment where no changes ever occur. In the real world, a population of clones without the possibility of mutation is doomed. By the way, I have never used sexual reproduction in my simulations. For this to work, the genome of the parents must be homologous. Then it becomes possible to combine them. The genome's architecture in my simulations does not quite meet such requirements. I will have to come up with a different architecture. I also made web versions of my models, so you can try them for yourself. You can find the link in the description. Note that real species that reproduce asexually use alternative methods of transferring genetic material, such as horizontal gene transfer. Thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. More support means more opportunities for new experiments. Until next time.
By the way, what is your favorite way of reproduction?